Well, hello there. Welcome back to Thomas Frank Explains. In this Notion Fundamentals video, we are talking about the basics of blocks inside of Notion, how to create them, how to manipulate them, how to change them, and use them to bend Notion to your will. What are blocks? Well, blocks are pretty much everything you see inside of Notion, except for the sidebar and some of the top menus and things like that. But all the content that you create and see and work with inside of Notion is built out of blocks, and blocks come together to form things inside of Notion that are greater than the sum of their parts. Think of blocks as a container for data that can take different shapes. A blob of text is a block, an image is a block, an embedded YouTube video will be a block, and even databases and pages themselves are blocks. A page, in fact, is a block that contains other blocks, and you can prove this to yourself by taking a page that has some content inside of it and turning it into another type of block like a toggle. And you're gonna to see all that content inside the new toggle. So in this video, you're going to start down the path towards becoming an expert at using blocks inside of Notion. We're gonna talk about how to create them in multiple ways, how to change their settings, and how to move them around in preparation for our next video on creating complex multi-column layouts inside of Notion. And starting with this video, we are going to start an example project that we're gonna be carrying throughout the entire rest of this course, which is gonna demonstrate pretty much everything we're gonna talk about in all all of the basics of Notion itself. And that is going to be the creation of this personal dashboard, which will serve as sort of a home base for your Notion workspace if you want it. In fact, if you've been to the course's homepage over at thomasjfrank.com fundamentals, you might've seen at the top of the page, a picture of my personal dashboard. I use this to get to my task area, my note-taking system. It is pretty much my home base within my Notion workspace. And by the end of Notion fundamentals, you are going to be capable of creating something very similar for yourself. You're gonna be able to create this and in this video, we are going to take the first baby steps toward getting to it. If you look at the personal dashboard, we have many different types of blocks that are all working in concert to create something that is very, very useful. So how do we get all these blocks on the page and what blocks do we have available to us? That is what we're gonna start covering right now. As always, you can go over to thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals, link in the description down below to get all the example files and written versions of every lesson inside of this course with lots of extra cool reference materials. So check that out if you are curious. Otherwise, let's roll that intro. Okay, here I am once again being in a circle on your screen. So like I said earlier, we're gonna be creating this personal dashboard inside of Notion, and this is composed of many different types of blocks in a multi-column layout. So like I said before, a block is basically just a unit of data inside of Notion. It can contain images, it can contain embedded content, it can contain pages, all kinds of interesting things. And to create a block, all we need to do is type our slash command. So what I'm gonna do is go over to a blank page and we're gonna start getting some of the content on the screen that we need to build this dashboard. So here's my blank page and we're just gonna call it personal dashboard. And to add our first block to the page here, all we need to do is type the slash command, like it says on the screen, and we're gonna get this list of all the different types of blocks inside of Notion. So we can scroll through here and we can choose one by scrolling and searching, or we can simply start typing to add something. So if I want maybe a heading, I can start typing heading. And if I want heading two, I could do it in H2 and I'll have that right there. I can either click it or I can hit enter and I've gotten myself a heading two. So let's just call this heading two tasks because that is one of the headings on our personal dashboard. And boom, I have put my first block on the page. Now, another thing you're gonna notice about blocks is there's this little six dot icon to the left of every block, which is the block menu. And if I open it up by clicking, I have a lot of different options that I'm gonna go through in a little bit, but I just want you to know that you can basically do whatever you wanna to do to this block by opening up this block menu. Now, before we go forward and start creating the rest of the blocks on this page, I wanna let you know about the Notion block reference that I've created inside of the course materials for this course. So once again, thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals, you can get all the supplemental materials, and this has a listing and example of every single block that you're gonna find inside of Notion. Uh, we've got a table of contents at the top here. So you can see all the basic blocks, things like to-do lists and toggles and bullet lists, numbered lists, all kinds of stuff like that. We have inline blocks, which are uh, inline links. And there are dates and reminders and mentions of people on your team along with inline formulas. We have different types of databases. There's an example of each different view of a database inside of all these toggles here. And we have media blocks, embedded things like images or web bookmarks or even embedded YouTube videos. 
videos. There are also other more advanced embeds like Google Sheets and Tweets uh, and even Whimsical Boards, which is a really amazing outlining tool that you can use to create flowcharts. Really cool thing there. And then there are advanced blocks. So synced blocks, which can sync content across multiple pages in one Notion workspace, uh, even across Notion workspaces in some cases, uh, block equations, template buttons, breadcrumbs, and table of contents, all kinds of really cool stuff. In this video, we're not gonna give an example of every single one there, but I do want you to know that this uh, reference exists and that you can see an example of every single block within it. So going back to our dashboard here, I wanna add a few more of the headings. I know we had one for notes, we had one for uh, references, and we had one for web links. So we're going to go ahead and get all those there. And then one thing that I like to do is give these a background color so they look a little bit different than the content underneath them. So if we go in here, we can change the color by going to the color menu. And then uh, these options here would change the text color. So I can show you that right there. And I'm gonna control Z so I don't have that there. Uh, but if I go and change the background color to gray, then I get a bit of a highlight here. And one thing that I like to do when I'm building my dashboards is also add a divider, or otherwise known as a horizontal rule, by typing the dash key three times. And that is another tip for adding blocks. For certain types of blocks, there is a way to get them onto the screen without actually opening the slash menu and searching for it. So for example, with block quotes or quotes, I can simply type a quote and hit space and I get a block quote there. Uh, for bullet lists, I can type the asterisk and get a bullet, or I can even type the dash and hit space and get a bullet. For numbered lists, I can type one period and get a numbered list there. And one more example, if I wanna create a toggle list, I can use this little HTML bracket here to the right, hit space, and I get an empty toggle. In the written version of this article, I have some more examples of some blocks that you can get onto the screen using special keyboard shortcuts, and Notion's documentation has lists of every single one available. They're useful to know, especially for creating things very quickly, but that is all I'm gonna say on them for now. So one more that I'm actually gonna show right now is how to create a to-do item because I want one beneath tasks. So let's go ahead and hit bracket on left, bracket right, and now we have a to-do. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a name, film video, and now I wanna add another to-do list item beneath this to-do here. Now, if, because I already have a to-do, I could just hit enter, and I'm gonna get another one, but I do wanna show you the other way you can start to create blocks inside of Notion, which is to hit the plus icon to the left of every single block. If I do that, I'm gonna get the option to create any other block. So I could create a heading, I could create whatever I want. In this case, I'm gonna create yet another to-do item. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill those out now. And I'm also gonna fill out some more basic content in here that is not super important to talk through. All right, so now we have some to-do items here. We have some toggle lists, which you've seen before. The next block that I'm gonna create is actually a page. And we're gonna have a whole video on creating and linking to pages, but I'm just gonna do it right here as well because it's very, very easy. You just type your slash command, you can search for page, and boom, you have created a page inside of your page. So let's call this page quotes. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste in some quotes that I had from a different page. So now we have this cool quotes page inside of our dashboard and going back to the dashboard, the next thing that I would really like here is a link to another existing page that is outside of this dashboard, somewhere else in my Notion workspace. So what I'm gonna do is actually go over to our Notion block reference here and I'm gonna hit Command or Control L to copy the URL of this page to the clipboard. Then I'll use Control back bracket to go back to our personal dashboard. And I'm gonna click this little plus button here and I'm going to search for link to page. So if I do this, I can search for lots of things. And actually I have it right here. So if I pasted the URL, it would also come up after a while and I can select it like that. But you can also type to search for the page if you know the name of it. So now what I've created is a link to page block. And one cool thing that I wanna note about link to page blocks is that if you open up your personal dashboard or anything in the sidebar, whether it's favorited or if it's in the workspace area, you're gonna see the link to your external page inside of this page in the sidebar. Even though the page is not actually contained within this page, that link there is a block and it creates a link in the sidebar. This is very, very useful. And as an example, I will show you, well, number one, I have my CIG creators companion here. This is how we manage all of our YouTube and blog content. And this is filled with pretty much nothing but pages inside of creators companion. But if I go down here to my Thomas's dashboard, you're gonna see all these items here with arrows. These are all pages that exist outside of my dashboard and I simply created these link to page blocks so I can easily access them from my sidebar without having to favorite every single one of them. It's very, very useful. Okay, back to our little dashboard here. I'm gonna create another horizontal rule and then I want a link to a web page here. So I can type my slash command and I can type link 
uh, and choose web bookmark. And I can paste in my URL like that and create a bookmark if I want to. But what I can also do is simply paste the URL onto the screen and I have the option to either create an embed, which will literally embed the web page inside of Notion or create a bookmark or simply dismiss it and have the URL on the screen. So I'm gonna also create a bookmark because I'm creating this little web link section here. And now I've got links to both College Info Geek and my personal website on my little dashboard here. And if I remember correctly, the next thing we have on the dashboard is an image of Bruce Lee. So if I wanted to, I could just type slash image and I could upload or embed with link. But what I could also do is if I have an image on my clipboard, I can simply paste it just like I would with a piece of text. And there is the image now uploaded to Notion servers and on my page. Lastly, I'm gonna add my favorite quote in the world, which is from Bruce Lee. So once again, I can hit my little quote mark and hit space to get a block quote on the page without having to search for it in the block menu. And I'll go ahead and type in my quote right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna change these to their gray background. And one cool trick you might not know about is if you type slash, you're gonna get the block menu inside of this text. But if you start typing a color and the word back, you can actually get to this background option here. So I can take that and make it a great background. Okay, next thing I wanna do is create a little list of quick links that actually link me directly to the headers on this page in case I'm scrolling through this dashboard on my phone and I don't wanna scroll through a ton of different stuff. I wanna zoom right to say the notes section, the web link section. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a toggle and I'm gonna call this quick links. And what I want to do actually is give this an emoji. So on Windows, it's Windows key and a semicolon. And let's type in navigation to get this cool little compass. Give it a space and bold quick links. And then in here, inside of our toggles, we can actually add any kind of block that we want. So I'm going to type slash and I'm going to search for a table of contents block. And now I've got links to all of these different headers on my page. And because we are on a pretty big screen, we're not gonna zoom down to them, but if I click them, you will notice that they turn blue, which is pretty much me linking right to them. If I were on my phone and uh, the notes section, the reference section was off of the screen, clicking this would zoom me down to it, which is very, very useful. So I'll go ahead and close that. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a, uh, another, let's give it a green background just to visually distinguish it. And one more thing that I want on my dashboard, if I get rid of that there, is a callout block. Now this just makes something stand out. And something that I want at the top of my dashboard is a little affirmation, basically just telling me not to spend so much time working and to live a more balanced life. So I'm gonna have that in there. And I may want this in some other places as well. So this is where I'm gonna show you how to use synced blocks. So if we type slash, just like any other block, we can search for synced block and this is basically an area where we can put other blocks, which we can then copy to other locations in our Notion workspace. So if I go ahead and uh, grab this, I can actually drag it into this synced block. And what you will notice is that I also dragged a block around. That's something I haven't covered yet, but if you click and hold on this little menu here, you can actually drag a block pretty much wherever you want. And this blue line indicates where it's going to go. Now for most of these blocks, we have a solid blue line, but notice that underneath these to-do lists, if I move it to the right a little bit, it indicates that I'm going to get an indented block. So if I go and do that, now it is indented underneath the to-do list item here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back there and get rid of the space in the synced block. And now if I wanna put the synced block somewhere else, all I need to do is hit this copy and sync button, which will copy the synced block to my clipboard. And let's just say if I wanna go over to this quotes page here, I could also add it at the top by hitting Control V to paste it. And with synced blocks, you can see, if you click here on this editing in one other page, you can see a list of all of the pages where the synced block exists. And you'll see a label for what this page is, but also where the original location of the synced block is. And if you wanna learn more about synced blocks, I have an entire couple of videos and a huge guide over on thomasjfrank.com and I will link those in the description down below. So I won't cover them too much more in this video, but I do have a very, very in-depth resource. So now we have a single column version of most of the kind of content we're gonna have on that personal dashboard here. If you look at the actual personal dashboard, you're gonna see that there's some different types of blocks on here. There are some databases, more advanced things. We're gonna cover those and add them in later tutorials in this series so you can understand exactly what's going on. So right now we have basically a rudimentary personal dashboard. And to round this video out, I wanna show you some of the extra options you have when it comes to blocks of all different types. And the options are actually going to change based on the different type of block. For example, in the block quote down here, if I hit the block 
menu, I actually have the quote size option. I can choose to make this default text size or large text size. So I think it's large by default here. And if I go ahead and make a default, it's actually smaller. I like it to be large, so I'm gonna set it back to large. And if we open the block menu for an image, we can actually view the original. We can make it full screen, which will take up pretty much the entire uh, notion here, make a light box. We can download it. We can view the original on the uh, AWS instance that Notion uses. We can replace it and we can also add a caption. So if we wanted to, we can even you know take this quote and we could have made it a caption on the image itself like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as a block quote. And something that we can do with pretty much every block is actually add comments to it. So if I go ahead and hit comment right here, I can add whatever kind of comment I want. And something that's pretty new in Notion is we can actually attach files to comments, which is pretty cool. I'm not gonna do that here, but check that out if you want to. And if I go ahead and click it right there, now we have a little comment icon and we can see, and even maybe have a discussion with other members of our workspace about whatever we're talking about. Another pretty cool thing we could do with pretty much any block inside of Notion is move it somewhere else. So let's say, and maybe a group I actually wanna move, let's say I wanna move this task list to somewhere else inside of my workspace, I can actually click and drag to select them all and then open up the block menu and choose move to. And if I type in a page, let's try uh, Creator's Companion, I get a list of options here and I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one, which is my demo version of Creator's Companion. And we'll go over here and scroll to the bottom and see all those blocks are now moved to this area. Another way to move blocks is to simply select them and drag them to pages in the sidebar, which I'll go ahead and do right now. And now we've got our task list back in our personal dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag those up and put them right there where they used to be. And last but not least, I wanna show you how to turn a block into another type of block. And the example that I'm actually gonna use here is this quotes page we created earlier. So if you remember, if you click in here, we have all these different quotes along with an instance of a synced block. If I go back to our personal dashboard and I click the block menu and hit turn into, I have the opportunity to turn it into all different kinds of blocks. Now with most of these kinds, like the headings here or a to-do list or number list, I'm going to end up with the title of the page turning into the block that I want. And then all of the content within that page is simply going to be underneath it. So let's go and do heading one as an example. All that content is now here. But if I undo and I turn it into say a toggle list, I actually get all this content inside of this toggle list. So if you ever have stuff inside of a page that you would really like to have within the page that contains that page, you can go ahead and turn the internal page into something else such as a toggle list there. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that because I do want it to be a page. And that pretty much covers everything that we are gonna cover in this Block of Basics video. We now have a lot of what we're gonna have on our personal dashboard once it is finished, but it is in a single column and it's not exactly looking like this finished personal dashboard. So in the next lesson, you're gonna learn how to create complex multi-column layouts inside of Notion. We're gonna get something that at least looks very similar to this personal dashboard. Once again, if you wanna go over to thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals, you can find the written version of this lesson, which has more details about blocks, and you can get all the supplemental materials, including this Notion block reference, which shows you an example of every kind of block inside of Notion. So check that out. You'll also have the opportunity to sign up for my Notion tips email list, where I've got lots of cool tips coming to the people who are specifically on that list. Check that out. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Ask questions in the comments down below, or follow me on Twitter over at Tom Frankly. I am very responsive over there, probably my favorite social network. So check that out. And thanks as always for watching and learning. See you in the next one.